MSG. These three letters have quite a bit of interest behind them. For what is basically just a food flavouring, MSG is a pretty controversial topic. So, the simple things first. MSG stands for monosodium glutamate. And to make it, first you need to take one of the basic building blocks that make up the proteins, one of the amino acids, glutamic acid. Then, second, you need to make a salt of that to produce glutamate. To be precise, you need to use sodium, make a sodium salt of it to make monosodium glutamate. And voila, there it is, MSG. Well, a single molecule of it, C2H10NNAO5. But why do we love this little molecule so much? Well, it's all thanks to umami. And what's umami, I hear you cry? Well, do you ever find yourself stuck with a craving? Something really specific like bacon, yeah? Or cheese, or chips with ketchup? Well, that's the work of your umami taste receptors and they detect a sort of rich, savoury, hard to pin down taste. And MSG really gets those umami receptors going. And it appears to be something that we're born to like because human breast milk is packed with it. We've spoken briefly about umami before in a video that we made with our mates over at Drinks Tube, so I'll put a link to that in the footnotes below. But it's a relatively recent discovery. We only found the receptor for umami in the year 2000. And saying that, we actually knew about the substance responsible for the umami taste back in 1909, thanks to the work of the Japanese chemist Kaikunai Akida. Now, he was inspired to look for something like it when he was enjoying bowl after bowl of his wife's seaweed broth. And he noticed that the broth even gave vegetarian food a meaty taste. And he refined the seaweed and ended up with some tasty crystals, glutamate. Kaikunai Akida didn't just sit around with his discovery, he patented the more stable sodium salt of that glutamate, MSG, as a nutritive and flavouring substance with a meat-like taste. He sold it as Ajinomoto, essence of taste and made a huge fortune with his discovery. People loved it. And by the 1930s, Japanese recipe books were regularly listing Ajinomoto and it spread across the world, reaching America after World War II, where soldiers returned from Japan having eaten MSG enriched ration packs. Okay, so, so far so good. A uh, happy story of discovery and huge sums of money. So what's the issue with MSG's effect on your health? Well, this controversy has two sides. Now, the first is a simple argument. Adding MSG makes things tastier and therefore we eat more. It's a pretty convincing argument. Although MSG is actually naturally present in high levels of tomato and Parmesan cheese, it's most famous for being added to processed and high calorie foods. And it's even been added to tobacco to enhance the taste. Needless to say, no one wants to champion something that makes eating 20 fast food burgers or smoking 50 a day more fun. Now the counter argument to that is that MSG can also enhance healthier foods, making vegetarian meals more satisfying, say, or giving an oomph to a plate of salad. Now Kaikin Ayokuda actually had that in mind when he started his work. He wanted to help Japanese peasants who could only afford rice and vegetables. But concerns about healthy eating link to the second worry. Is MSG itself bad for you. Now the rumours that MSG could cause harm started in earnest in 1968 when Dr. Ho Man Kwok wrote a letter to an American medical journal describing symptoms that he'd experienced in American Chinese restaurants. Weakness, heart palpitations and numbness. Now the condition came to be called Chinese restaurant syndrome. Some even worry that there could be a long-term brain impact after eating MSG, since glutamate is a key neurotransmitter in the brain. Studies have shown that massive doses of MSG will harm animals and stunt brain developments, and huge doses on an empty stomach do make people temporarily sick. But most stories about MSG causing cancer and neurological damage or obesity seem to be unsupported. Now, there are people with MSG and natural glutamate sensitivities. Their symptoms are usually mild though, and it's a pretty rare sensitivity. As our friends over at BBC Future have pointed out, human studies haven't found much evidence that usual levels of MSG are harmful. And several people who described themselves as sensitive to MSG didn't show much reaction when they were given food containing it without knowing it was there. 
And yes, it's true that MSG contains free or unbound glutamate, but the glutamate we find in our food, linked to other amino acids, will be digested by our bodies until it's unbound too. And glutamic acids and glutamate are actually already a pretty common part of our diet. The average person eats 10 to 20 grams a day, whereas a typical serving of a food with added MSG contains less than half a gram of it. Plus, our bodies actually produce about 50 grams of MSG a day. Getting a headache after Chinese food might be due to hearing about Chinese food syndrome, suffering from the nocebo effect, where a person feels ill because they expect to. Now, because of this effect and MSG's bad rep, many companies have stopped naming MSG on their labels exactly because of this, using instead substances that naturally contain it, like hydrolyzed vegetable protein or autolyzed yeast. Can't trust a crisp seller, I guess. Anyway, whatever it's called, I think it's okay to conclude that you're probably fine to chow down on MSG. Although I'm not saying it's cool to go scoff 10 MSG packed burgers. Then you'd be suffering from fast food syndrome, which I've just made up. A bit like the issues with MSG. What do you guys think? Has that made your mind up on MSG? Do you like the taste of it? Do you even notice it's in the food? Um, the video that I mentioned earlier that we did with Jamie's Drinks Tube is there. Click on that if you want to see more about umami as we make uh, one of the most nicely balanced cocktails ever. It's all about flavour.